Hey folks, I'm Tom Vassell. And I'm Melody. And today we're taking a look at double trouble. No, <laughs> we are double trouble. We're taking a look at Tesla and Edison. Although I guess they were kind of double trouble. Um, this is a game from Artipia Games, and they definitely do games that are historically based. And here we see Tesla and versus Edison. Now, in real life, Edison won. His was the light that came out. We see AC versus DC, the two different kinds of current. There's a bigger game, Tesla versus Edison. This is Tesla versus Edison Duel. The big game involves stock markets and increasing your thing. It's a very pretty in-depth game. This one is a simple two-player game. Now, you, how much you know about Tesla and Edison? I know that they're competing to see who can make like the light bulb first and what's more popular. Or get electricity out. Yeah, that too. Right. So you know Edison invented the light bulb, yeah. or at least one of the guys working for him did. But anyhow, that's not the point. The point is there's a lot of history in this no, game. They didn't like each other. They did not. We're here, though, to tell you not whether the history in this game is correct, but whether or not the game is fun. At the beginning of the game, players are going to pick different people that they're going to be. It could be Nikola Tesla, uh, here can be George Westinghouse, Thomas Edison, and so on and so forth. The, o the only thing is, one person has to be an AC person, the other person has to be DC. So we'll do, uh, let's see, Tesla and Edison, right? So you pick these guys, you're going to get the stocks that come with them. So here's the Edison stocks, the Tesla stocks. The six that you don't pick are going to be placed over here. So I have Brush and Thompson and Westinghouse. All those are going to be a uh, minor company for share stocks. There's three technology chips. One person's going to get two, the other person gets one. One person's going to start at two on the... Um, Basically, this is the fame or your reputation track. And so each person is trying to accomplish a goal on their card. So for example, Nikola Tesla needs to control more cities than the opponent in each region and have all three technology chips. The Edison needs to be 10 points ahead in the New York region and be leading on the PR track here by six or more points. There are three regions in the game here, New England, New York, and out west, and players are going to be fighting over those. They're going to be doing so by using cards from this assistant deck. Each round of the game, players will be drawing three of these cards. They're going to pick one, keep it, pass the rest of the next person, and then get one back. So you have three cards to play. As you play these cards, they're going to do various actions. If it shows the technology symbol on it, you basically will steal a technology chip from your opponent if they have one. And that just basically shows that you have leadership in that technology. Uh, you need to have those technology chips if you want to take a share. So to take a stock, you need to play a card with this symbol here. And when you take a stock, you'll just take a stock of one of these companies here. And you have to have the symbol that matches that, the technology chip in front of you. And then when you take it, you're going to put it on your side. So if I take this Maxim here, that has to go in New England. It says it on the card. And this is going to give me a certain amount of control towards controlling New England, New York, or out west. For each Maxim share, if I have one, I have one point of control. If I have all five, I have nine points of control. So putting stock out is a good way to have control. Another thing that you can do with these assistants is you can electrify a city. That's what this little uh, building symbol means here. When that happens, you can pick from one of the available cities over here, and you're just going to just pick one of these. So let's say I pick St. Louis. I'll then put that city on my side here. Again, this is each player is on each side, and this is going to give me two points worth of control to out west. Then another thing you can do is simply move up on the propaganda or the PR track. This lets me move two up on the propaganda track. So each player is going to be moving here. Now why would you want to move here? Well, if there's a tie for region control, whoever's higher on the PR track is going to win. And every time you land on a multiple of three, you get a free action which we'll show you here. Your free action could be move up two more on the PR track, or it could be take a city or take a stock. It's basically one of the actions that's available in the game. 
And then finally, monopolized power is the last thing, and that is this symbol right here. And what you can do is on one of these three regions, you can put the no DC or no AC, which basically stops your opponent from playing shares or cities of that type there. So that's that. You also have your own shares, which you can either place in a region that it shows, so Edison shares would go here to New York, they act like normal ones. You can put this out as a free action, or you can discard one of your own stocks to take another action of your choice. So remember, I showed you those personal goals, whatever they might be. So for example, Mr. Thompson here, if he has 10, if he's ahead 10 points in the New England region and leading on the PR track by six points, he'll win the game. Charles Brush, control four more cities more cities than your opponent in any one region and have all three technologies. You pull that off, you win the game. Otherwise, after three phases, if no one's done that, then whoever is the final leader in each region you put together, whoever has the most regions, so essentially two out of the three regions, wins the game. I should also mention between each round, whoever is leading in each of these is going to get a bonus. So here, whoever's leading in New England will get three on the PR track. Whoever's leading in New York gets a free share, and whoever's leading out west gets a, a free city. So that's involved in the game also. All the chips in the game are pretty hefty chips. They're very nice quality. The artwork and stuff on everything is very historical. So you look here at New York, and you can see it looks really good. The different colors are easy to tell apart. You know, blue, orange, and pink. All the cards are good quality. The shares look different. The shares also show what, you know, how much value they give. The assistants, who are all very red, I, I, I kind of wish that they were maybe different, but they show, you know, different famous people who were involved at that time. And the symbols on the card, they're very, very simple because that's pretty much the whole game is, and easy to know. Overall, the components for this game, very good quality. Now, I like games the, with a historical theme, and this has kind of a historical theme to it, but it's pretty tenuous at best. I mean, when I play this, I'm not like, Edison, remember what Edison did? And Westinghouse, eh, they're kind of just there. Yeah. The cards are, it, the, the game is kind of streamlined down to a two-player game. Now, one of the things this game does that I really like in games for the most part is drafting. What do you think about the drafting this game? You start with three cards, pick one, pass them to your opponent. Uh, usually I really like drafting, but to me, because the cards are really similar, it's just like, pick a card, here you go. That's <laughs> okay, like. I actually, I didn't know what you were going to say in this regard. I was curious, but it's the same thing. This is the most boring drafting I've ever seen in a game. You get three cards, many times, Two of them are exactly the same, maybe all three. And it's like, um, I'll keep this action. Does it matter? I mean, you want to do specific actions, right? But it's not like it was like, hmm, I'll take this card, and then you won't get it. No, there's a few cards. You draft one, you hand it to you. Two-player drafting might be interesting, but with a few cards, a few drafts, pfft, this was so boring. I think the game would have played almost exactly the same had we just each drawn three cards and played those cards. Mm -hmm. And so when you, okay, so forget the drafting part. So you get these cards that let you do the actions. What do you think about that? So you can put a city out, you can get a share, you can put no AC or DC on something, you can um, steal the technology chips back and forth. What do you think of all that? Um, I thought everything was like really simple. Just here you go, flip the chip. No, you can't place it there. Um, the cities, I was like, okay. <laughs> yeah, well. <laughs> I know what you're saying, right? It wasn't, it's like a, it's basically like a tug of war. I'll take this technology chip from you. Give it back. You know, um, I'll, I'll take this technology chip. Now I'll play this. I never felt for a moment like I was like, oh no, you took this technology chip from me. Whatever will I do? Or if I did say that, it was because I didn't even get the cards to take it back anyway. Yeah. And then like the different stocks that need the different thingies, I was like, okay, that just depends on which ones you have at the moment. <laughs> Yeah, it's not like, it's really weird that there's not a lot of choice. You pick one of those stocks and where does it go? In the area that it's supposed to go at. Mm -hmm. You know, and so you might have two different possibilities based on this, the, the technologies that you've taken. The PR track's also interesting, although you're, at first you're like, ooh, this is a score track. It's, it's not. It just gets you more bonuses as you move up on it but it might be one of your victory conditions. So the victory conditions, okay? So let me go through these victory conditions here. We'll pick, we'll pick one at random. 
Madam Walker. She needs to be 10 point or more points ahead in the out west region and be leading on the PR track by six or more points. How possible do you think that is? Nearly impossible. Yeah, I was going to say M is the answer to that. It's just, sure, I'm, I'm sure it happens, but your opponent would have to be like dead. <laughs> I mean, it's like, I'm playing Madam Walker. I need to be 10 points ahead in the Old West region. So what will your opponent do? Not the... let you get 10 points ahead or six points in the PR track. They will simply stop you. The only way they won't stop you from accomplishing your goal. If they're majorly focusing on their own goal. Right. In which, which... case you then stop. <laughs> I don't get these goals at all. I have yet to see a game end with one of these. Maybe it's, I'm sure someone will, you know, email, well, it happens all the time. Maybe, but it seems to me like the other person would have to be really bad at the game. Yes. So if that's the case, then it comes down to who controls more in the region. So this comes down to the whole thing, is the game fun? You know, we didn't like the drafting. We thought the game was kind of simplistic and not a lot of, of choices and so on. But did you like the game overall? To me, it was okay. Because to me, it just depended on what cards I had. It's like, okay, I'll play this card, and it does this. And then the thought part didn't really feel like a big part of the game. Like, sure, they helped you get points, but then that was it. And usually I don't really like stock games so much anyway, except for that Yeah, but this didn't feel like a stock game. Yeah, you were didn't. just putting stuff on each side and it having area control. It was like, it felt like it was supposed to be a stock game, but it didn't. <laughs> what would you rate it? Oh, low. <laughs> Probably like a five or lower. Okay, so here's the deal. <laughs> I'm always talking about games saying this game felt fiddly. This game could have been streamlined. This game does not feel fiddly. No, it's very straightforward. You just do what it tells you to do. It has been streamlined like all get out, but this is the other extreme. This has had the fun streamlined right out of it. Like, ooh, I have three cards. Which one will I draft? Does it really matter? Not really. Ooh, I'm going to make a cool play. No, there was never like a, aha! Like, there's a lot of great two-player games out there. The Cosmos line has a lot of them. There's even games that have tug-of-war type things in them, but they feel interesting and fast, and this one just didn't, this one just didn't grab me at all. It felt boring. I mean, the whole time, I never was interested about anything. I wasn't interested about this. I looked at it, I was like, <laughs> that's never going to happen. I, I, um, I guess that was interesting. I never like who, who's ahead of each area gets some extra spots in the track. Oh, you took a technology chip from me. Oh no, I'll take it back. It just, I don't know. It just, it wasn't, it was a really boring game for me. I'd give this one a four, I like think, no unfortunately. That much either. If oh well. Do what it tells you to do. And here's the thing. I don't know that the game is like awful. It's just that it's not fun. It's just boring. Eh. Well, still, there is historical theme in it, so that's good. Tesla vs. Edison. Winner? Not the game players. I'm Tom Vassell. And I'm Melody. And you've been watching Double Trouble. Boom! Thanks so much for watching the Dice Tower videos. Find more great videos and reviews, as well as our top-rated audio podcast at Dicetower.com. You can also find other great shows at Dicetowernetwork.com. I'm Eric Summerer, and you've been watching The Dice Tower. The Dice Tower is sponsored by Cool Stuff, Inc., where you can find great games for great prices. Cool stuff in stock. Check them out at CoolStuffInc.com.